Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha and mabuhai. My name is Emmy Ortega Anderson, and I want to welcome you to another edition of Pinoy Power Hawaii here on Think Tech Hawaii. We come to your home every Tuesday live at 12 noon, and today we have a very special treat for you. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce my special guest today to help us with our empowerment. Here on Pinoy Power Hawaii, we aim to enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain, but the bigger picture is that we hope to empower. And we're going to do just that with our guest. Uh, her name is Kimi Gabbard, and she has a wonderful story of empowerment to share with each and every one of us. Uh, Kimi, welcome to Pinoy Power Hawaii. Thank you for having me. It is a pleasure to uh, get to know you a little bit closer and personal, and uh, we want to let the listening audience know when they hear of uh, Kimi Gabbard, uh, tell us what you're all about. Well, um, I started a nonprofit organization called Kalei Aina. It was a vision of mine for about 15 years now, mm -hmm. 10, 15 years. And it slowly progressed, but the vision was generally Eastern, Western Hawaiian cultural treatments in a natural environment. But as I look back on my life and how I had personal, a lot of personal experiences mm -hmm. of my own, I became more specific and focused on helping people with who suffer um, from PTSD or who have been traumatized. Mm -hmm. um, I think it really affects our outlook, our actions, our decision making as a whole, even when we become adults, that we didn't even realize how much it affected us back when I was a child. Yes. And so um, just trying to bring awareness to our community about what trauma can do, mm -hmm. uh, what and how PTSD has such a negative stigma, but by providing education to our community and to bring the awareness that it's it's nothing to call like crazy, mm -hmm. rather than to say, how can I understand what this person has gone through and help take responsibility for our community mm -hmm. as we are known on the Hawaiian Islands as Ohana. Yes. Our culture is family. Mm -hmm. So once you step on our aina, it's more of a, you're part of our family. And so taking that responsibility, just rather than just grumbling about it and complaining mm -hmm. what other people should do, I'm trying to help and just uh, as much as I can do and mm -hmm. to help other people who have the same goals to say, hey, you're not alone. And you're, you know, let's hear your story because mm -hmm. everybody has a story. Yes, we all do. And yeah. I'm so happy to uh, connect with you because uh, what you're talking about, you're mirroring uh, what uh, I want to do. Uh, in a bigger picture. Yes. Um, it's part of my empowerment to help those that uh, don't have any hope or they're so beaten down that they don't know where to run to or uh, to go to for help to get out of uh, their misery. Um, explain to us real quickly uh, to some of us that are not quite familiar with PTSD. As PTSD stands for post-traumatic stress disorder. Mm -hmm. And it's people relate to that specifically just to military. And right now, it's not just military. It's anyone, who, any individual who has suffered a traumatic event, mm -hmm. whether it's one or several. It depends on their coping mechanisms, their, how they're raised, their education level, their genetics. Um, it's all cumulative and comprehensive of how high at risk or low at risk you are mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, in developing the PTSD. Um, post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, people can be traumatized several times, many times, one time, and have developed PTSD. Other times, no, they have symptoms, but mm -hmm. not enough to be categorized as having PTSD. Okay, so let's uh, walk our uh, audience uh, back to uh, some of those experiences that uh, uh, prompted you to want to make a difference. Uh, like in my case, uh, I've uh, lived with my mother 
uh, suffering from Alzheimer's, only oh. to find out later that uh, she was suffering for a lifetime with PTSD. Uh, it was traumatic for her to have me because from a broken relationship, uh, she was fooled uh, by my father, uh, thinking that he was going to be there as a family unit, and yet uh, she was abandoned when she was pregnant with me. So my upbringing, or how I came about to this earth, is uh, very traumatic. So I can relate to what you're saying. As a result, she was uh, mentally uh, challenged with, um, she's got a beautiful mind, mm. but uh, because of her trauma in her life, um, she didn't know how to handle these uh, trials. And it's painful for me to hear. And when I hear of stories like uh, people suffering from PTSD, it brings me back to that very uh, traumatic day when uh, my very famous father, who is a politician, wanted to abort me. And if my mother uh, chose that route or that decision, I would not be here today. So I was conceived hearing of the word abort. Let's terminate. Let's get rid. Can you imagine? Uh, because the fetus has such a, such a mind yeah. that it can grasp and understand everything that's going on outside of the womb. So. But you're a living testimony. <laughs> you're a living testimony of exactly what empowerment is, right? Just, we can do this, survivors, that we're not alone. Sharing our stories, we're not alone. And there's so many other people out there that, you know, from an Asian, I'm, I'm, I'm adopted. Um, my, I'm adopted too, yeah. It, I was saved by my stepfather. Oh my God. So, you know, that's, that's like heaven, that, that was the answer. Yes, yep. Yeah, heaven yeah. sent. Uh -huh. I truly believe, and that's part of my, um, that helped me throughout everything that I've gone through. Uh, I was adopted, my, um, found out that my dad actually came back after I was adopted six months later to come fight for me. And because he was going to be a single parent, they, they granted my parents uh -huh. um, <clears throat> in custody. Uh, that was, tr you know, that's, no matter what, I'm blessed by the fact that our parents adopted us, that we had a family. But my adopted mom suffered from mental illness, too. She had her own story. She suffered her own traumas in her uh -huh. childhood. Um, and therefore, she developed some mental uh, develop mental illness. And growing up with that and having to deal with that was challenging. She was abusive mentally, physically, emotionally. But as I got older, I realized that she was just human. And she, we didn't speak Asian style. You don't speak of your problems to anybody because that's very shameful. Yes. You don't air out your dirty laundry to uh -huh. anybody. And um, don't tell family secrets. Just That's right. You, know, you, you cover it up you, and uh, you learn to smile even though you're hurting inside. And you like mask mm. that hurt and pain for so long that, you know, I went, and I think I went into survival mode after uh -huh. a while because it was just, one after another after another and just being, you know, she said, oh, I'm going to kill myself. And then every time I came home, it would be like, am I going to find my mom dead? Dead, You know, and unfortunately, my parents separated when my senior year, um, so several years before that. But by a senior year, my dad remarried. Mm -hmm. um, and it, he just told me one thing I'll never forget is when I was leaving for college, he says, OK, now, Kimmy, you're 18 years old. You're gonna. You're an adult now. Uh -huh. You're gonna go off to college. Um, now your happiness is your own responsibility. Mm. Because you're an adult. Now yeah, an adult. Transition. And for uh -huh. I never listened to my dad. <laughs> or never. <laughs> right. I'm like more of like the butterfly, like social butterfly, it's carefree. But somehow, that stuck with me. Mm -hmm. And he even said, and if you can't be, if you can't be happy, mm -hmm. just be at peace. And that's what I tell a lot of people who I work with who have been traumatized. You know, sometimes trying to 
have a long-term goal versus a short-term goal, trying to find that peace within you to say, okay, do I need help? Can I, who do I trust? Uh -huh. Where do I go? Yes. You know, she, um, luckily I had friends who really helped me mm -hmm. and God, God was my saving grace. My personal story was that God was my saving grace, that he put people in my life that really helped me, whether it's short term or long term. Mm -hmm. And I really felt the love and connection, which helped me, you know, keep going. It was yes. just, uh, and you know, after that, I was de-virginized and raped by a, a good friend of mine who I went to church with. Uh, he, it, it was very shameful because I was like, oh, how can, it was in their house and I just, he was attractive, but I didn't want that. I was mm -hmm. like a virgin, you know, I'm a very good girl. I didn't believe in that. My mom raised me mm -hmm. like Baptist. And I went to church since I was like three, four years old. So to me, that was very sacred. So when that was taken away from me, yeah. I kind of felt used. Like I wasn't good at, you know, I wasn't, I was used product. And so I, I didn't, I lost self-esteem, I lost self-confidence. And then I chose a road of self-destruction, which I didn't even realize. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, I'm over it, it's okay, whatever. You know, I, it just, it went, it was so traumatic that I, I like put it secretly in the closet somewhere in my mind. Like it didn't exist. I thought mm -hmm. rape at that, cause I was so sheltered. I thought rape was like, you know, Lisa Ao, that you were raped and then left for dead. So I just thought, oh, I'm, I've, I'm fortunate, I'm still alive. And my girlfriends were like, no, this is what happens. Uh -huh. So uh, you were lucky to live through it. Live through it. Yeah, and rather than uh, being found dead. Yeah, and I, for me, that's what rape was. But mm. there's so many types of rape and how you can be raped by even mostly, most times it's people you know. Right. Uh, and it's just, it was hard to take. And I didn't, I decided to put it in the back storage. It you, makes it even more traumatic right. because these are the people that you trust. Right, right. exactly. Mm -hmm. And so for me, trust was gone since my mother, uh -huh. you know, um, started abusing me. And then of course, when I was raped, that lost more trust in people. Uh, but as time went on, I, I chose really bad guys, bad boys that really, you know, I was, I didn't have self-esteem. I didn't have mm -hmm. self-confidence. Um, self One of my friends was like, you're such a doormat. Um, but it yeah, was they my- They call you names that degrade and just uh, rip your soul apart. Right, because mm -hmm. they're like, they didn't understand. And I was from an Asian culture. My mom brought me up. Even though I'm adopted, mm -hmm. I'm, you know, white, Hawaiian, Spanish, and Asian, but I was raised in a culture where you don't say anything, you just pretend nothing happened and smile. Right, move on. Move on, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, what, at what age was this, Kimmy? Uh, 18 years old. Uh -huh. um, so I went to college and I had one boyfriend for a long time, for several years, and then we broke up and then I went, came back home. But when I came back home, it was like the same destructive cycle. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't. It, it was just not good, good decision making. So um, it, it went on, it's like a bro broken recording. Yes, and, and you know, I wasn't even conscious of it. Mm -hmm. I wasn't even like, what am I doing? It was just like, oh well, whatever. And it came to a point where uh, it climaxed to my, one of my boy, ex-boyfriends who I ended up in the ER and I worked in the ER. Mm -hmm. And I when I became a patient, the, um, the chief of medicine, who is very respectable and very stern, mm -hmm. uh, sat down with me and just said, you know, Kimmy, I don't want to end up seeing you on a channel to news dead. Mm -hmm. He goes, do you see what I see? He goes, you have bruises all over your neck. You are six foot two, you know, tall, dark, handsome, and mm -hmm. just threw me like a rag doll, almost fell off the balcony once. and. It was, and I always kidded myself, like, oh no, he loves me, he's just angry, mm -hmm. you know, 
he'll, he'll, not real. he'll get better. You know, I can help him get mm -hmm. better in doing the Florence Nightingale syndrome thing. Hold that thought for a moment, and uh, we will continue our conversation. You are tuning into uh, Pinoy Power Hawaii, where uh, we uh, become transparent and we share stories that uh, hopefully will make a difference. Uh, we will be right back here on Pinoy Power Hawaii. Aloha, this is Winston Welch. I am your host of Out and About, where every other week, Mondays at three, we explore a variety of topics in our city, state, nation, and world, and uh, events, organizations, the people that fuel them. It's a really interesting show. We welcome you to tune in, and we welcome your suggestions for shows. Um, you got a lot of them out there, and we have an awesome a studio here where we can get your ideas out as well. So I look forward to you tuning in every other week where we've got some great guests and great topics. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to come away inspired like I do. So I'll see you every other week here at 3 o'clock on Monday afternoon. Aloha. Hello, I'm Yukari Kunisue. I'm your host of New Japanese Language Show on Think Tech Hawaii called Konnichiwa Hawaii, broadcasting live every other Monday at 2 p.m. Please join us where we discuss important and useful information for the Japanese language community in Hawaii. The show will be all in Japanese. Hope you can join us every other Monday at 2 p.m. Aloha. Welcome back to Pinoy Power Hawaii, and uh, we appreciate you tuning in to our weekly program. We come to your home every Tuesday live at 12 noon. We're having conversation with a very wonderful, lovely uh, woman of empowerment. Uh, Kimmy Gabbard is her name. Uh, I will ask her how, she's re uh, how she has that Gabbard name. Uh, but uh, again, uh, our mission here on Pinoy Power Hawaii, which is an extension of my radio program on Pinoy Power Media, we aim to enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain, and we hope to empower. And to do, today, we're doing just that. Welcome back again, our guest, Kimi Gabbard, the founder of Kala'i Aina. Mm -hmm. And uh, I understand it translates as a land of peace. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, let's go back to our uh, discussion. I, I feel for you, uh, your pain uh, feels like I've been there, but part of me has that denial. And of course, uh, Asians especially, we tend to uh, do a good job covering up. We put our plastic face forward. Yeah. We call it Tupperware <laughs> in uh, the Filipino language, and we move on and pretend like nothing happened but it comes back to haunt us and it keep resurfacing like a broken recording kimmy that uh, it, uh, it uh, affects us on the long run uh, eternally if we don't uh, get hold of it yeah exactly and so uh, tell us about the gabbard name because people are wondering and uh, curious yes i'm related to Tulsi gabbard and uh, mike gabbard uh, actually i went full circle around uh, Telsey's oldest brother, Bhakti, uh, was my first boyfriend uh -huh. ever. And so after a few months, we parted our ways, and every so often in life, we would cross paths. Mm -hmm. And a few years ago, we, he messaged me saying, would you like to hang out? I'm going to be in Hawaii for a little while. I said, sure. And then it just tr transpired into getting married. And, um, and he, he's such a blessing to me because uh -huh. of the fact of all my track records of bad decision making with men. I finally found and ended up with a, a wonderful human being with a great soul and spirit and very optimistic and very loving. His name is actually, you know, we always kid each other because he says, uh, what does their name mean, Bhakti? Uh -huh. And I, he says, love and devotion. I was like, okay, great. Remember that <laughs> to me. <laughs> the Gabbard name is so well known here yeah. in Hawaii, and we have uh, high regard for them, oh, uh, especially you. Mike and uh, Tulsi. Tulsi, yes. yes. Wonderful people, stable, very healthy. Uh -huh. Grounded. Grounded, yeah. very grounded and real. It sounds like your uh, man, uh, your, uh, your king, who came to rescue you with his shining armor yes, and came back yes. for the second time around. You know, God works in mysterious ways mm -hmm. and the higher powers, you know, is I went full circle. I many toads and then I came 
and uh -huh. made me more appreciative of what I have now. And so you're having awakening, just like I'm having awakening. The second time around for me, I, I, I just wanted to share my blessings with others by helping to empower others. And this is how Pinoy Power Hawaii came about, about um, it's an empowerment. But I grew up on the island of Lanai. Uh, I uh, developed a, a Tita attitude, like... Uh, <laughs> I'm from Wainai. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so okay. you can Sometimes. relate to that, right? <laughs> yes. um, uh, there are people that goes around bullying other people, mm -hmm. and uh, if you surrender to that, you're going to be um, uh, bullied for life. Right. So I learned to stand up, not in a physical way, but uh, in words. Mm -hmm. That uh, there are ways, you know, the saying, uh, uh, "The pen is mightier than the sword." Yeah. I started to write uh, my thoughts out and. Um, learn how to speak. When I came to Hawaii in 1969, I was nine years old. I I could hardly speak uh, English, wow. but uh, you sound perfect. <laughs> I ended up uh, <laughs> mimicking Connie Chung oh. because she was Asian yeah. and spoke uh, well. she spoke well. Mm -hmm. So I would practice, take my mirror, and uh, you know I would uh, imitate how she pronounced things. And this is probably why today I'm able to uh, speak without my Filipino accent. But it still surfaces, you know. But you're uh, beautiful and you're an inspiration. Just we have a lot of things in common. I, I develop uh, my yeah. own uh, pride, not not in the sense of being boastful, but uh, I'm proud of my ethnicity now yeah. and very proud of it. And strong. Confident, <laughs> empowerment. <laughs> so, Kimi, I understand that you attended uh, Punahou School. Yes, you I know did. when you say Punahou, uh, you got to have money to be able to afford that school. Because I sent my daughters to Saint Andrews Priory, and when they were attending about ten years ago, it was up to twenty grand a year. Uh, Punahou oh. was even more expensive. Yeah. So and I was fortunate. I was an only child because I was adopted. My mom uh -huh. didn't have kids. And so I was very fortunate in that way, but there's, you know, money can only buy you so much happiness. And mm -hmm. it comes back to um, working with who I am and right. developing self-confidence, self-image again. And, you know. So they wanted to give you the best education to, uh, to train you for and the world. And Puno was the best years of my life. Uh -huh. I actually, you know, through all you know, being married to a military who had PTSD with psychosis, putting a gun to my head, wow. thinking that was funny, uh -huh. you know, having bad relationships, with, abusive relationships with boyfriends. Um, uh, the Punahou, when I actually start to separate from my ex-husband, from he was in Iraq at that time, mm -hmm. um, after he came back from his R&R, &R, uh, I was diagnosed with the brain tumor. And so, you know, even though we're in a separation, I was like, I need to stay married because of insurance reasons and somehow mm -hmm. um, friends and people put on Facebook what happened, what was going on. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing how Punahou, I mean, not, I'm biased, but because of like the family you develop, not right. just in high school or grade school, but for your lifetime, mm -hmm. I was so, you um, I was so happy and like kind of shocked that Wow, these people remember me 20 mm -hmm. years ago, and yes. they're, they're saying, "How can we help you? We, ha you have our support. I have classmates come and pick me up, mm -hmm. take me to dinner. It was amazing. You formed that eternal bond. Yeah, yeah. And I'm thankful to all Punahou, our Punahou family. Thank Yay, you. Yay, Punahou! <laughs> <laughs> um, you mentioned brain tumor. I was diagnosed in 2004 with brain tumor. But uh, for me, I think it was my body's way of uh, saying, hey, I have a problem, I need help. Because all that time with all the traumas in my life, yeah. I was still in a denial too. I did a really good job in hiding, masking uh, all the pain that I was uh, going through. In fact, today it still hurts for me to talk about it. That's why I kind of just uh, rush through it and uh, don't go into details. But uh, I'm a survivor too. So, but you made uh, well for yourself. <laughs> yeah, and thank God uh, the brain tumor has—it uh, it was divine 
uh, interven intervention that it didn't uh, grow to interfere with my ability to uh, think or uh, uh, reason. Yeah. Wow. So, so how is your brain tumor? Is it under control? Well, every six months I have to go through MRI, MRI, uh -huh. blood tests, and everything. Yes. Um, I go through that too. too. I can relate. Yeah. Uh, luckily, uh, like I said, through faith mm -hmm. um, and uh, just uh, being more cautious, being more uh, strict with my diet. Right. Yeah. That's a huge. That's a huge part of that it. That is. And yes. I mean, uh -huh. my husband and I are vegetarians. The whole Gabber family are vegetarians, but. When I became a vegetarian, when I married my husband, I gained 20 pounds. So there's like good, healthy uh, uh -huh. vegetarians and not so healthy. <laughs> <laughs> so, but um, I did because of memory loss and some, uh, you know, debilitating memory issues. It was more of a, how can I better my brain, right? Yes. So I, I actually, I'm reading a book now, uh, Dr. Daniel Amen, the uh -huh. Amen Clinics where you can actually develop, and he says nutrition is key. Yes. You know, getting yourself checked, spec scans, and nourish, think of your brain as an mm -hmm. um, organ that you need to be healthy. If it, that's not yes. healthy. Uh, uh, it's part of our temple. Yes. So uh, we yeah. gotta do our job to take care of it yeah. because we only have one, right? Absolutely. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, with the uh, time that we have remaining, I know that uh, you founded uh, uh, Kalai Aina, mm -hmm. and uh, I'd like to connect with you in that sense. Okay. I have I, I have a one acre of uh, a land that I'm farming, and I always uh, feel at peace when I'm working and tilling the land because I'm so close to nature. So if there's any way that we could uh, help to turn that as a sanctuary, oh. uh, a place for uh, women or uh, people can get away to experience a little bit of heaven on earth, uh, I'd like to uh, share yes, that blessing. I greatly appreciate that because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm so into working together uh -huh. for our, with our community because it's not competition, it's just about the the mission, the purpose, the passion we have, because we live through it. Uh -huh. it. We put our hearts into it and know and understand it from an empathetic view that these women, guys, children suffer from any type of trauma are hurting. Yes, it's but not this, just women. Right. Yeah. And anybody the could be a victim. Silence is the killer. Yes. You know, it eats at you and it can actually manifest it itself out into uh -huh. a physiological illness or disease mm -hmm. and look both of us we've been through so much trauma that I, I really do believe because it's idiopathic of my brain type tumor that we are survivors yeah mm -hmm. it's caused by I think it was caused by a lot of stress because at that time my husband my ex-husband uh -huh. it was insane of that's why my heart goes out and wants to work with military as well and first responders because I'm a yeah. first responder I really believe that it's our body's way of saying, hey, I need help. Uh, there's something wrong with me. Help to fix me. Yeah. So if anybody would like to help, donate, uh, help you with uh, your intent to uh, continue your mission, how could they reach out to you? So uh, it's Kala'i, I know, www.kala'i, K-A-L-A-I-A-I-N-A.com. There's a donate button. Mm -hmm. um, it's I would greatly appreciate it. This is phase one is I have my own office in Kailua. Uh, we provide support groups. We're doing outreach programs. We're working with women correctional facilities that mm -hmm. have really been traumatized a lot. Um, and then phase two is combining Eastern, Western Hawaiian cultural treatments in a natural environment. So mm -hmm. I'm trying to build a retreat um, with options of treatments. There's not one specific type of treatment right. program that helps everyone. Everybody gets to pick their own. Because, but help is available. But help is available. And to bring the awareness out mm -hmm. and to stop the negative stigma yes. about, I'm going to keep this a secret. I know I'm mm -hmm. suffering from something, or my husband or my child is suffering from something, but I'm just going to keep quiet. This is a time to come out and not be silent, to get the proper help, and to have that support that helps you say, I'm, you're not alone. Yes. Because that's key. Nobody wants to feel alone. Well, let's come together and yes. find peace yes. and uh, bring <laughs> awareness. Hope. Thank you again for being here, uh, Kimmy, and I wish you the best of, of luck. Thank you very much. And we appreciate you for sharing. Thank you. Uh, good luck.
Thank you. Again, um, we want to thank you for joining us here on Pinoy Power Hawaii, and uh, we encourage you to tune in every Tuesday, 12 noon, here on Think Tech Hawaii for more empowerment. And as we say, aloha, maraming salamat po, mabuhay.